Hello everyone, my name is Arablutfi and in this video we are going to talk about uh, the next emergent property of water which is called moderation of uh, temperature by water okay uh, and these are the main subjects for this video and so without any further ado let's get started with our video so water moderates air temperature uh, by absorbing heat from the air that is warmer and releasing it back uh, to uh, the air that is cooler okay and so I'm sorry about these pictures because these pictures are handmade by uh, moi and so uh, sorry if it's not very graphic graphic okay so uh, and water acts as an effective heat bank because it can um, absorb uh, and release a relatively large amount of heat with only a slight change in its own temperature okay uh, so to better understand this capacity of water uh, at first we have to learn about temperature and heat and some basics okay so let's learn about them right now okay uh, so temperature and heat so anything that moves uh, has a kinetic energy okay uh, which as you might know kinetic energy is the energy of motion okay uh, and atoms and molecules have kinetic energy because they are always moving uh, and although they don't move in any particular direction but still they move uh, while they are they are in the same place uh, it's like when your phone is vibrating okay someone is texting you or uh, calling you and it's just on it's on vibration mode okay and so the faster a molecule moves the greater its kinetic energy okay so that's not very hard okay so the kinetic energy associated uh, with the random movement of atoms or molecules is called thermal energy okay uh, and as you might know thermal energy is related to temperature but uh, they are not the same thing temperature uh, represents the average kinetic energy of molecules in a body of matter uh, regardless of volume okay so this is very important regardless of volume whether the thermal energy of a body of matter reflects the total kinetic energy and thus depends on the, uh, the matter's volume okay so this is the part that uh, they differ uh, temperature and uh, thermal energy dif differ from each other okay so when water is heated in a coffee maker the average speed of the molecules increase uh, and the thermometer records this uh, as a rise in temperature okay in liquids uh, and the total amount uh, of thermal energy also increases in the in this case okay uh, and please note the thing that i'm going to say okay so uh, although the coffee pot has much more higher temperatures okay than say uh, the water in a swimming pool uh, the swimming pool contains more thermal energy because of its much uh, greater volume okay and so that was why i told you that um, a few you know seconds ago um, i told you that the, the thing that i'm saying is important okay uh, they are the uh, thermal energy and temperature are very different from each other okay as in the case that if you touch the water uh, of a coffee maker or the coffee which is inside the coffee maker uh, your hand would uh, get uh, I know one degree or two degree uh, degrees uh, no, two degree uh, burns but uh, if you just jump into a swimming pool you won't get the same effect okay so those are the differences so whenever uh, the two objects uh, objects of different temperatures uh, are brought together the result will be thermal energy 
passes from the warmer to the cooler objects okay until the two objects are at the same temperature and after that if uh, the two objects are cooler or warmer then the temperature of the surrounding okay they will um, just exchange uh, their thermal energy again with uh, the, the surrounding environment okay which uh, can be uh, solids or uh, air or just water okay or other uh, liquids okay whatever uh, so the molecules uh, of cooler objects speed up uh, in the expense of thermal energy uh, of the warmer objects okay uh, so now i have a question for you uh, tell me uh, can you tell me the process at which uh, the these ice cubes okay that we put in our drinks um, does just cool our our drinks okay so think a little bit about that if you want you can pause the video as well so the answer is an ice cube cools our drinks not by adding coolness uh, to the, our drinks but actually by absorbing the thermal energy from the liquid uh, as the ice cube absorbs uh, the speed, uh, no, absorbs the energy or kinetic energy uh, of our drink. Okay, uh, and so it uh, the ice cubes molecules just speed up. Okay, uh, so they gain uh, the kinetic energy or thermal the thermal energy from the uh, our, from our drink. Okay. And as you can see in this picture, okay, uh, this, uh, for example, the red uh, circles are our drinks molecules, uh, and uh, these arrows uh, show the flow of energy or kinetic energy or thermal energy uh, from these uh, molecules uh, to these, uh, you know, I think bluish colors uh, bluish circles uh, on the right okay and they are uh, the ice cubes molecules okay uh, and the molecules that are in between okay that have different colors uh, are actually just um, the same w uh, drinks molecules that have given off their um, kinetic energy to the ice cubes and have become less energetic okay and have in mind that uh, these molecules okay our drinks molecules for example uh, are just like uh, 10 no 9 or 8 year old kids which have uh, a lot of energy and when they eat sugar exactly mostly okay and uh, they have lots of energy and they just um, run around okay yeah and that uh, and we know that uh, these uh, kids need more space uh, because they just run around and they don't want to we don't want them to uh, just uh, hit each other or the walls of our home uh, so they uh, need more space uh, but these other molecules which are uh, which have lower kinetic energy uh, they are mostly like these as the same kids which have been uh, running uh, for too long or uh, just banging each other uh, and so each other or the walls and so they have less energy and they are more tired so they don't need that much uh, how do I say it space okay uh, so uh, they are more compact and that's why when we put water uh, in for example the freezer uh, it becomes frozen and becomes these ice cubes okay and when we drop these ice cubes inside uh, the, uh, water okay or drinks it's like uh, giving these kids more sugar okay uh, or seeing their other friends and that makes them more energized so it starts all over again so a convenient unit of heat energy uh, is uh, uh, that is mostly used in uh, most textbooks uh, is called calories okay so one calorie is the amount of en uh, heat energy that is needed to rise the temperature of 
uh, one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Uh, and conversely, a calorie is also the amount of heat energy that one uh, gram of water releases when it is cooled by one degree Celsius. Uh, and uh, so they are exactly the same thing, uh, but uh, it, they, were, they are good to have in mind. Okay, and a uh, kilocalorie or kcal or kcal, okay, uh, is uh, a thousand uh, calories uh, is a quantity of heat required to uh, rise the temperature of uh, one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius or uh, a thousand uh, grams of water by uh, one degree Celsius, okay. And it's just just the same as calories because uh, kilocalorie is just uh, a thousand uh, that is previously written uh, to calories. Okay. Uh, so uh, and most of the times you see that on uh, food products they are not writing calories because that would be a very long number they mostly use uh, kilocalories okay and so another uh, unit uh, which is uh, used vastly in uh, textbooks is called joules okay uh, and uh, this joules uh, was named uh, after the scientist who discovered it uh, and so this is, is his picture over here uh, and so one joule equals 0 0.23 calories and one uh, calories uh, equals 4.184 joules okay so again they are the same but it's good to memorize them okay and so that was all for this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it uh, but uh, we are not finished with this emergent property of water uh, and we will continue this subject in the next video because this video is long enough uh, so as always until the next time next video uh, happy learnings to you all